What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chanda D, your Techno Dad here, and in today's video we're going to be setting up Dolby Atmos on a Sony STR-DN1080 AV receiver. And we're going to get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about 4K, home theater, and audio products, and how to set them up properly, you should consider subscribing because I'm here to help. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get an alert when I do a live Q&A stream and when a new video gets released. Now that that housekeeping's out of the way, let's get into it. All right, everyone. So before we begin, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to the good folks at Sony for sending me one of these AV receivers for review. Now we are talking about the STR-DN1080 and it retails for $599. Now there were a couple of weeks uh, last month where it was down to $499. So this still fits into my $500 to $600 budget range and it seems pretty cool. So let's stop talking and go see what's in the box. All right, here's a remote. And we also get some batteries. Microphone for setup. FM radio antenna. Get some manuals and uh, warranty and all kinds of other literature. As you open it up, you get this other little piece of paper that kind of shows you how to plug in speaker wire. And it tells you not to like splice the wire and use a whole wire instead, okay? All right, let's check out the front panel. From left to right, we've got power. We've got a quarter inch headphone jack, microphone input, that's for calibration, and a USB port. Now on the top part, we have a speaker button. We have Bluetooth pairing, an NFC sensor, and tuner presets up and down. Now in the center, we have a sound field selector. There's two channel, multi, movie, and music. So depending on what kind of content you're listening to, you can change the sound field. And we have a display button, which changes the front AVR display. So you can set it to show the current input or the decoding like Dolby Atmos. Moving on, we've got the zone buttons, select and power. And then we have the dimmer, the IR sensor, and a pure direct button rounding out everything on the top section. And last but not least, we have the two big knobs. One of them is the input selector and one of them is the master volume. All right, let's flip it around to the back. We've got digital audio inputs, coaxial and optical, and then we've got analog video and audio ins and outs. Right next to that, we've got zone two output and subwoofer pre-outs. Now along the top, we have our HDMI connectivity section. We've got six ins and two outs. Pretty awesome for this price receiver. Next to that, we have IR remote in and out jacks and a LAN port. Now at the bottom, we have our speaker outputs. This is your 5.1 speaker output section. To the left of that, we have our height channel section. So this is where you plug in your Atmos modules or your ceiling speakers or your elevation speakers. Next to that, we have our zone two speaker outputs. And rounding out everything on the back panel, we have two wireless LAN antennas and a power cable. All right, so I removed the Onkyo and I slid the Sony in place. It didn't take me too long to connect everything up as all of the cables are labeled. All right, so once you get through like internet and firmware and calibration, you get to this cool looking UI and we need to go to setup. So from this menu, let's go down to speaker settings. Now, if this looks familiar to you, if you've you know used a PS4 anytime in the last couple of years, we need to scroll down until we get to speaker pattern. There it is. So it looks like we're already set up for Atmos. We just kind of need to fine tune things. Okay, speaker pattern looks okay, 5.1. Hit okay. Now we need to set the height slash overhead speakers. Right now it's set to top middle. We have some options here. We have 
front height, top middle, front Dolby, that's a module, surround Dolby, those are modules, and that's it. That's the bottom of the list. So let's go to top middle, that's where I need, and then click save, and you're good to go. Now there is this really cool thing here. If we go to speaker connection guide, this is really cool for uh, you beginners that don't really know exactly where everything needs to go, but it tells you how to set up your speakers or how to connect your speakers and where they belong in your room. So if you scroll down, it'll highlight the speaker and the corresponding speaker terminal that's on the back of the AVR. Now let's go back to the speaker pattern area. We start at 2.0. Then we got 2.1. Then we got 3.0. 3.1, front stage with the subwoofer. 4.0. 4.1. 5.0. 5.0. 6.0. 6.0. 7.0. 7.0. 8.0. 8.0. 9.0. 9.0. 5.0, and here we are at 5.1. And we got 5.0 with the surround back, 5.1 with the surround back, 6.0 with surround back, no sub, 6.1, surround back, and 6.0, 6.1, and there it is, 7.1. This is a very cool UI, I'm really, I'm really digging this. Sony did a good job here. All right, now that that's all set up, I tossed in the Dolby Atmos demo disc and hit play. Now, if you want to see Dolby Atmos on the front, like I said earlier, you need to press the display mode button here on the AVR. Boom. So I press it and there it is, Dolby Atmos. I also went ahead and tested it out with a DTS-X demo disc. And there it is right there, DTS-X Master Audio. Fantastic. Now the one thing that you'll notice if you have it on this display mode, if you do not have anything playing, it will say no stream. All right now, wasn't that pretty easy? I think it was kind of straightforward. And since it was already set up to go with Atmos, you could just be good to go right out of the box. But let's not jump the gun. One thing I did really like about this Sony was the user interface. Lots of graphics, a lot of diagrams, really help out anyone that's new to home theater. I personally have never owned a Sony AV receiver, so it was nice to you know see exactly what they have to offer. Now I will be taking about three to four weeks to review this AV receiver, so do me a favor, if you have any questions about it, leave them down in the comments and I will do my best to address them in the review video. Again, a big shout out and thank you to the good folks at Sony for sending this in for review. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad. I'll see you next time.